Hey guys, today we're going to be replacing a blower on an IQ 1001 unit. We're going to be using our new SPR8 Revision 1 blower and we're replacing an Amatec. First thing I'm going to do before we start the blower replacement is I want to make sure that my unit is powered off. I want to make sure I'm doing that at the rocker switch. And I also want to make sure that the gas is also isolated to the unit. You don't want any gas uh, on during the replacement process. So today I'm going to be taking our new SPR8 Revision 1 blower and we're going to be replacing it on the IQ1001 unit. So thanks for coming along for the ride. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take off the blower that's already on the system. Okay, so what we're going to do for that first is we actually have to take the gas valve off of the blower in order to start this process. It's a little bit hard to see in the unit and so I actually have a blower gas valve assembly here with me. You can see on the back of the gas valve assembly, there's three screws we're gonna be looking to remove. To keep this simple, the easy way to remember this is they're the screws that go all the way through the swirl plate. So we're looking at this screw here, this guy down here, and there's a screw hiding right here. Okay, so we're gonna take those three screws off first, and that's what I'm gonna do on our unit here. So I need a T20 screwdriver in order to do that. We're gonna identify those three screws and I'm gonna re remove those right now. So we've gotten the gas valve and swirl plate assembly off of the blower. What we're gonna do next is actually remove the blower. In order to do this, we actually have to have a long Phillips head screwdriver. It has to be about nine inches long in order to access a couple of the screws. So we're gonna do that part next. Those are the easy ones. We have to fish our way through here. So we've gotten the blower off of the heat exchanger. We actually have to disconnect the harnesses here in order to take it out. So we've got the three pin power harness, we'll disconnect that. And then you just pinch the speed harness to remove that as well. So we're gonna take that new blower, the old blower rather, and place it to the side here. Now the next thing we wanna do is you wanna take our new blower, our SPR8 revision one, and we're gonna actually install a adapter plate on the back side of the blower. It's important to line this up correctly so that when you put the gas valve back on, you can actually attach the two pieces together. So what I've done on this blower, just to illustrate where we're gonna be attaching the adapter plate is we've actually highlighted with Sharpie the three holes that we're trying to line up here. On the adapter plate, you can see I'm going to be lining up these holes like so, okay? You can remember which holes you're looking for because they are directly next to, adjacent to another set of holes here. Okay, so those are the ones we're looking for. So we're going to install that piece next. Okay, these are Phillips head screws. 
just gonna get them started with my hands here and then we'll tighten them up until they're flush. So now we've got our fan adapter plate installed on the blower. So after we've got the adapter plate back onto our new blower here, we're actually going to now put the blower into the cabinet. And before we do that, to make things a little bit easier for yourself, you're going to have a green gasket that actually lays underneath the blower when you're attaching it to the top plate. And you're going to be shipped a set of new hardware to attach that blower to the, the top plate. It makes it easier if we actually put the gasket on the blower here first, we line up the holes, and then we put the gasket, or rather the uh, washer and the screw hardware through here first. That's gonna make it a lot easier when we go to actually place this inside the unit. Okay, so we got the new blower installed inside of the cabinet on the new on the heat exchanger here. So before I forget, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to connect my wiring harnesses back to the blower. Now in order to do this, you may not have enough range on the existing harness to plug it into the back of the blower. So we're going to look at the zip ties we have here. You may need to cut a couple of zip ties to extend that range a little bit, so I'm going to do that right now. Okay, so that looks about good. You don't want to put too much strain on the actual harness. You want to make sure you've got enough give here that you know when the blower starts vibrating, it's not actually going to pull any pieces of the harness out. Okay, so we could even maybe loosen up a couple more connections a little bit more here. So just do as much as is necessary. You don't want this pulling on the blower harness. I've got my power harness here I'm going to connect as well. And now my next goal is getting our gas valve back onto the blower. So that's why we put the adapter plate on there. Now we're gonna have the connections to actually attach my blower and swirl plate to the unit. One thing to keep in mind here is that on the blower, I could show you on my blower right here, this swirl plate is going to come off with the gas valve. That's the goal. Okay, if 
these screws come out and you lose the swirl plate and you have to actually reattach the swirl plate, keep in mind that this peg that is on the swirl plate here lines up with this hole. Because that gives you a good reference point for if my swirl plate falls off while I'm trying to replace it and I have to locate it back on, you want to orient the swirl plate so that this peg is located through this hole. And you've noticed that I actually marked this on this blower here with the Sharpie. That gives me a good reference point so in case I drop something, now I have a reference to go back to. And this is where the fun begins. When I'm tightening up the gas valve swirl plate to the blower, I'm making sure I'm not over tightening. You want to make sure that when you look at the swirl plate, you're not seeing it deflect. It actually will cause you to have a worse seal rather than a better seal. So keep that in mind. Now that I've got that attached back, there's a couple of additional items we're going to do before powering the unit back up. The first of those items is with the new SPR8 Revision 1 blower, we actually don't need this black tubing here anymore. So I'm gonna pull this black tubing off. I can just do that with my hands, very simply. So we come in here. Pull that off. Set that aside. Now the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a two millimeter Allen key or T-handle, and I'm actually gonna make an adjustment to the high fire screw. Because this is a different blower style, we want to make sure that our combustion is preserved across the unit. When we're doing this type of replacement, our first priority is getting the customer back up and running. After we've made this adjustment, the heat exchanger will be able to fire. But we want to make sure that we are having somebody come back out to the site and do combustion tuning afterwards to make sure that we're getting ourselves back in the optimal range. So in order to get the system up and running, I'm going to locate the high fire screw on the gas valve. On the gas valve I have in front of me here, I'll just show you where that's located. My high fire screw is going to be this guy here. The easiest way to remember where that's located is it has a plus or minus on either side of it. So you're looking for this screw here. You can either use a very small flathead screwdriver or a two millimeter uh, Allen key in order to adjust that. To open the high fire screw, we're going to go two full turns counterclockwise. All right, at this point, we've completed the blower replacement on our IQ1001. Before we start the unit up, and before we turn this system back over to the customer, we want to make sure that we do a leak test. So we're going to take our gas sniffer, make sure that we sniff to make sure there's no leaks in the system. If there are, we want to make sure we're checking all of our connection points again. And again, we want to have somebody come out and combustion tune the unit. 